Father God, we proclaim your greatness. All the honor, all the glory belongs to you. Because you have remained the one who you say you are. From all generations, you have never changed. And Father God, you are demonstrating this to us this morning. As we continue, Father, to lift you up. As we continue to magnify your holy name. Because for sure there is no one else. No one else like you. Father God. We are reminded, almighty oh God. That for five days. You created everything that is on the earth. Everything. They were created by you. But on the sixth day, Father God, you created this special being. And you said it reflects your image. It reflects, Almighty God, all that which it belongs to you. And Father God, we cannot hold back this morning to bring glory to your holy name. Thank you for creating us in your own image and your own likeness. For surely, almighty God, there is no one else like you. Father God, there are so many names out there, almighty God, in the earth that are highly guarded Limakabre, Almighty God, extinct. But there is no one that's the name of Jesus. This name, Almighty God, every time it is mentioned, Almighty God, every grip of sin is destroyed. When this name is being mentioned, Almighty God, the lame are healed. The deaf ears are opening and the blind eyes are still opening, Almighty God. And the grief has no power over this name. Father, as we continue to proclaim this name this morning, Almighty God, we are believing, Almighty God, that you are moving across this building this morning and you are touching everyone, Almighty God, according to their needs, Almighty God. Because, Father God, what is this that is difficult for you that you cannot be able, Almighty God, to touch and bring, Almighty God, total, Almighty God, total healing, O King of glory. Because this is who you are, Almighty God. We declare, Almighty God, that all chains are breaking forth, Almighty God. All shackles, Almighty God, of every kind, they are being loosed, Almighty God. Every time when this name is lifted up, Almighty God. And we will continue, Father, to proclaim, Almighty God, with the power of the Holy Ghost, Almighty God, because the Holy Ghost is lifting every suffering, Almighty God, into perseverance, Almighty God, and to perseverance, Almighty God, through a character, Almighty God, a character of hope, O King of glory, that does never disappoint. And this morning, Almighty God, we keep on hoping, Almighty God, on you, King of glory, that even that which, Almighty God, it doesn't seem like it's working, O King of glory, when we continue to lift it up unto you. Father, you are creating a situation, Almighty God, that we can see you, Almighty God, moving, O King of glory, because this, every time, is your business, that when you move, Almighty God, every situation is 
being changed. Every situation is being lived first for your own glory. And this morning, Almighty God, all the creation, Almighty God, they bow before your holy name. The earth shakes and it trembles, Almighty God, when you are lifted up, Almighty God. And this morning, oh Father God, we cannot with the hair looking of glory to lift you up, to lift you up, Almighty God, to exalt you all the more, King of glory, because it is this Almighty oh, Father that He shall bring this renewal, O oh, King of glory, that all the time we keep Almighty oh, God on trusting Almighty oh, Father. The scripture says, Almighty oh, God, that anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. Thank you for creating us, Almighty oh, God, as a new creation this morning, O oh, God. That Lord God, we will continue, Almighty oh, God, to lift you up, Almighty oh, God, with this knowledge, Almighty oh, God, that you have made made us to be this new creation in Christ Jesus. And Father, we give you praise. And Father, we give you the honor and all the adoration. Come on, let's put our hands together all the more and continue to bless this wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. You need to stand to your feet. Just give the Lord a great praise offering today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome back. Um, shake three hands. Just say, I love you in the Lord today. God's moving. Just say something good. Say something good. Where did our pastor go? Oh, we're just better together, aren't we, church? Glory to God. How many are ready for the earth to shake? Have you read the scriptures? It says that the coming of the Lord, the earth will shake, and all the unbelievers will hide in their caves and in their uh, pits that they have dug in the ground. Amen. And now what it says? And the world will turn in fear as the Creator comes to reclaim his planet. Hallelujah. And it doesn't really talk much in the scripture, if you read it, what really happens. It just says, and the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, and, and it's all over. I mean, it doesn't say, does it? Um, and we're, we're caught in the middle of a lot of warfare right now, aren't we? And rumors of war and uh, the battles are raging and people are fearful and angry and all sorts of language is going forth, right? And that will continue and that will increase. But what does the word of God say? It says when the Lord comes, it just all stops. So uh, rest assured, let, the, let the, the faith of God grow in your heart today. Let the peace of God be your portion today. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you, you can't ignore it. I mean, you understand, I, I keep telling you that our state, we're one of the last bastions of, of uh, ungodly thinking. Remember, our legislature thinks it's a good idea to worship Satan. They think it's a good idea to teach your children that they can change their gender. They think it's a good idea to keep abortion. They think it's a good idea to legalize marijuana and to uh, fund our schools through our, uh, through our uh, gambling casinos. They think that's normal thinking. Well, I, I don't know about you. I'm against all of that, aren't you? But those that are in places of authority today think that's normal. You can't ignore the fact that you, where you live, Amen. Now, there's a couple, th there's several options. You can just run away and hide, you know, live in your house, keep your mask on. Don't talk to strangers. You can do that. Or you can run away and leave the state. But sometimes when you want, run away from where God has planted you, it only gets worse, doesn't it? Have you ever discovered that? Yeah. Anyway, or you can stand up and be light in a dark place. I think that's our responsibility. Now, I, I know you can't ignore it because everywhere you go, you see these signs, fight COVID, 
get vaxxed and boosted, right? Well, let's analyze that for a minute. Is that really fighting COVID? No. No. How do you fight a sickness? How do you fight a virus? You get healthy. You get healthy. You build up your immunity. Hallelujah. Pastor, welcome. Welcome. You build up your immunity. That's how you fight. That's how you win. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 So I would encourage you not get boosted. I would encourage you not to do that. It may not affect you, but it's affected millions. Thousands have died. Children have been altered. It's not good. Say not good. So so if you haven't figured out yet, everything our leadership says in this state is always a lie. Get used to it. If you think aborting your children is normal... Anything else you have to say, I, I don't want to hear it because there's something wrong in the way you think. All right? All right. So, so if you really want to fight COVID, I would encourage you, build up your natural immunity. And whenever you come across it, you know what? You'll fight it off. And you will win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might get sick. You might be discomforted for a few days. But you know what? You will rise up and you will win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I will win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Does that help you? All right. I know sometimes we think, oh, maybe I should just go ahead and cave in. There was a national basketball star. I won't mention his name. He's part of the NBA. He caved into the pressure and got vaccinated last week and immediately died. And you'll never hear about it. At least not in this state you won't hear about it. Yeah. So. But God is on the throne. God is good. And in the midst of all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and gave himself for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor uh, Nick and your beloved wife, uh, would you mind uh, standing so we can honor you? Uh, And would you come up here? This this is your brother. come, Come here, Nick. These guys came from, these guys came from, from Delaware to Puyallup because God said I want you to move to Puyallup and start a church and uh, he, he's part of our PCG network and uh, we've been in conversation and, and uh, you must be crazy because no one wants to come to Puyallup to start a church but uh, in your wife's name Anita Anita we welcome you. Now, the problem is, how many understand whenever you decide to do something in God that the enemy pulls out all his stops to stop you? Has that ever happened to any of you? Okay. All right. All right. And the devil doesn't play fair, does he? Oh, no, he doesn't. So just a, a week ago, uh, they lost their 22-year-old son who, who died in his bed. And so they are grieving today. And I don't know if you've ever lost one of your children. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it, Karen? So uh, they asked if they could come and be with us today. So I would like all of the Kenyans that are here to come and surround this couple. Because they're, they're from Kenya. So, what, Why do we get the Kenyans here? It's great. And uh, if, if, with your permission, sir, we're going to pray for you. Lydia, please, in the front. David, Pastor David, get over here. Where'd he go? Hallelujah. David, pray. Still tight in your hand. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this Father God, you are God of all comfort. And we want to thank you, mighty God, because you are bringing forth comfort, almighty God. In every situation. In every circumstance. Almighty God. Sometimes. When we are hard hit. We ask ourselves so many questions. Why are we. Why are we going through this. But Father you know it all. And this is the reason. Almighty God. We want to lift you up. 
Even as Almighty God, they continue, Almighty Father, to go through the process that they are going through at this particular time. Would you come, Almighty God, and visit their heart and lift them up, Almighty God, that they will not, Almighty God, be able to cast out that which, O King of glory, you have spoken to them, Almighty God, to serve you in season and out of season. Father God, we thank you, we bless you, mighty God, for bringing them, almighty God, in our side, almighty God, this morning, that we can lift up your holy name, and that, Lord God, we can worship you, and mighty God, that we can speak to them, that it is well, almighty God, with their souls. We thank you, we bless you, mighty God, because, Father God, you are at work, O King of glory, and the Holy Ghost is working, almighty God, to make everything to look beautiful. Beautiful, almighty God, in your eyes, almighty God, in the eyes, O King of glory, that your name will be lifted now and forevermore. We thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your servants today, Lord. They have served you wholeheartedly, O God. Today, we ask you, Lord, to comfort them, Lord. Give them peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God. Father, you know the reason why this happened, oh God. You are the only one who can comfort. You are the only one who can give peace, oh God. Father, I pray today that your joy, God, your peace will surround them in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that you lift them to heights, O King of all glory, higher heights, O God. In the ministry that you will see them through, O God, in Jesus' name. That every step they will take from now, Jehovah God, you will ordain it, O King of all glory. And you will take them, Lord, higher in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jehovah God. As they open that church, oh God, may you come in a mighty way, Father. May you bring people to them from east, west, south, and north in Jesus' name. May they never struggle in Jesus' name. May they, then, may they never struggle with rent or house, oh God. Provide unto them, Lord. Give them more grace in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, sir. we thank you and we bless your name. May they know you more, Lord. Out of this situation, oh God, it is not easy, Lord. But you're holding them with your mighty hands, oh God. We honor you today in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is still God. God is still on the throne. We still love him. And he still loves us. Regardless of what's going on. I thank God that God ordered our steps here. Me and my wife. We just want to thank God for all that has happened. We just moved to Washington, and we've just been settling down with my son. He just got a new job. It's had him two, three months. But last week, his roommate just found him unresponsive. We still don't know what happened. But the case is still going on. It was very devastating when I received that phone call that... We need you right here. Right then I knew that there was something wrong because the previous day we had an online meeting and someone said we need to pray for our children. And I said, I'm going to pray for our children. I remember that day praying for my son real hard, but I didn't know what was going on. But I was telling my wife that my heart is heavy because sometimes when you are in the spirit, the Lord reveals certain things to you and he prepares you for what is about to happen. Then the following day, I got a phone call that your son um, is sick but needs to go to the hospital. I said, no, uh-uh, 
tell me if he's breathing. Uh, there was an hesitation. Is he alive? Uh, there's an hesitation. Then I quickly hopped into the car and went because he lives just five minutes away from me. And, he, you know, he wanted to live on his own so that he's able to uh, mature. And the moment I arrived there, I see the fire truck. I knew, God, I just thank you for the news that I'm about to receive. It was not easy. We've been grieving. But God is God. And thank you, Pastor, for standing with me together with Bishop. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. And uh, you almost preached my message today, so I think that's a confirmation. Thank you for both of you. So uh, as our service, at the end of our service, just spend some time and pray with them, encourage them today. Amen. You just live down the hill, so you're in our neighbor in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Linda. She can follow that. We raised four sons. We can take anything. Yeah, and it's not been easy, and we've had some heartbreak in our own lives with our children. Um, but I can't imagine how hard that must be for you. <sighs> I get to tell the like, business of the day now, but just keep praying for them for a long time, okay? Because it doesn't just go away in a couple of days when you lose someone. It's very difficult. And their names are again, Pastor Nick and Anita, correct? Father, I just thank you right now that you're going to cover them, surround them with your presence wherever they go, God, and that your, your Holy Spirit would just be really near to them and comfort their hearts in the days ahead in Jesus' name. Life's just not fair sometimes, but, but we, in the end we win. Because they can take our lives, but and we only just go to be with Jesus. I mean, that, how much better is that, actually? And as we get older, we think about that a lot sometimes, you know. And, and there's sometimes circumstances that make you feel like, I want to go now. <laughs> can we go now? Can we all just go to heaven and forget this whole thing? But I guess he still has things for us to do. And... Uh, our hearts go out to you in, in love and support. And if you have my husband's phone number, call us anytime if you need us. Because like you said, we've raised four sons. They're all grown, but it's not been easy. And some of them are with God and some of them aren't. So <laughs> ah, even though you do your best, you know, and you, you always look back and say, what could I have done different? But God says, no, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this. Okay. So I'm just going to move on to ask you to politely turn your cell phones to silent <laughs> and to, or turn them off because uh, that's just courteous to the pastor when he's trying to speak. And I know you all probably have already done that, but anyway. So if you want to put the giving thing up on the screen, I'm not going to say too much about that. You guys know what that is and how to get to the website. If you want to give online, you can give, um, give that way <clears throat> since some of you are watching live stream. But those of you who are here, you can do that as well, I suppose, but you can also give in the regular way with checks and cash and things. And we appreciate your, your support in all of what we've been through in the last couple of years. We're still here, and we're so thankful that God has uh, so helped us to stay where we are and to flourish and add new people every week. So it's great. Just want to remind you that next week is February 6th. And we're having a fellowship time after service in the back there. <clears throat> Someone didn't silence their phone. <laughs> oh, no, it couldn't have been him. And uh, so we always look forward to these times of fellowship. And we're going to be doing that next week. But after the fellowship time, we're going to have, for those of you who consider Gateway your church home, we're going to have our annual business meeting, which is always, it's actually going to be kind of a good time. We're going to be letting you know what's going on with the church and how we're doing well and 
We just want to thank you all who, who feel like this is your church home. You could have questions answered and different things like that. And, uh, but that will not be on live stream, just letting you know. You have to be here to hear that. We're not broadcasting our personal business over the Internet. So <laughs> anyway, um, just wanted to thank you all for being here today. We love you all so very much. And I will turn this back over to Pastor. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I remember when we started our, our uh, we got the green light from the Holy Ghost. And we got the green light from Pierce County to remodel, refurbish, and rebuild our fellowship hall in the back. And it was August of 2018. And, and uh, you know, it's crazy. I don't know. Uh, but we, uh, we have our new building in Jesus' name to care for your children, to care for the poor, to celebrate, to have fantastic wedding receptions. To take care of your children after school because you're still working, right? What can we do with a community center that no one else would dare to do because we use the name of Jesus and they won't? What can we do? I, I just want to tell you, we're right on the edge of some great breakthrough in Tacoma. Hallelujah. And you are God's answer. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're God's answer. Come on. I'm reminded, sir, pastor, I'm reminded of the scripture in Corinthians where Paul said, I, I've been broken, but not defeated. I was pressed down, but they couldn't keep me down. I, and everything that could possibly come against me has come against me, but it did not work. I, I have been delivered. I will be delivered. And God always answers prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> we're going to receive our tithes and our offerings right now. Most of you have received an offering envelope, correct? And when, if, if you have not already uh, filled them out, uh, we want to uh, give you an opportunity to do that. And then we're going to do a great song of, of celebration together. And I want the power of God to overtake your family. How many want that? Uh, we want to agree together as, as a church and overcome in the, even the most difficult of circumstances. Amen. And if God does it for one, he'll do it for you. Will it? Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to celebrate as we give to the Lord. And as you're ready and as you're prepared, please bring your offerings to the front. Put them in the offering receptacles. And, and, uh, and let's just see what God will do with us this morning. Can you please uh, join hands with someone close? And we're going to pray over our giving. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that in the midst of all things, <clears throat> we give you praise. <clears throat> in the midst of all things, we give you praise. We thank you and we give you the honor today. We give back to you our tithes, our first fruits, our offerings. And we thank you for the, your glory and your presence that's here today. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone say amen. amen. Hallelujah.
<laughs> Put your hands together. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we just praise you today. We just praise you today. I think the Spirit of God is moving. What are we supposed to do? Ha! Huh. Go ahead, be seated. Thank you, team. We've been talking about prayer for months. We've been talking about the spirit of faith for months. We're starting to believe God together. There's a divine, there's a purpose, there's a reason God created the body of Christ. We know the scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, there's no limitation, is there? There's no pre-qualification. There's no test you have to take to see if you qualify. Whosoever simply would believe into him shall not perish but have. Hold on to everlasting life. Your eternal life begins today. Hallelujah. If you're not holding on to life, you don't have life. Amen? Amen. But to fulfill that word, God created the church, the body of Christ. So somehow you and I must have something to do with his great salvation, with his great redemption, that all the world might be saved. Hallelujah. Faith, we've talked about faith. Faith is what comes into you the moment you believe. We have access into this mighty grace through faith. Amen? Romans 5.1. And this essence, it's not you believing. Faith is a, is a substance from heaven that comes into you the moment you believe. Remember that day? Remember that day, church? When you hear the word... And then you believe what he has just said to you, faith comes. It's the hearing of faith. Say the hearing of faith. Last week we talked about this. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? See, God has miracles to work among you. Pastor, God has a miracle for you. God has a miracle for your family. Hallelujah. God supplies the Spirit to us in abundance, does He not? If you're not sure, I'm going to have to find someone else to preach to. Why do we need the supply of the Spirit? To work the miracles. Amen. Can you see that? And it comes through the hearing of faith, not by you doing it right. Can you see it? So how do the miracles actually come? Well, I just, I just pray and maybe God will do it. Oh, Just believing God, listen church, just believing God is not sufficient. Once you hear, then you have to do something. Because you're believing different than everyone else around you. You have to take the word that you just heard and you believe that word. It'll cause you to do something, to live different. Once you hear by faith, hallelujah. Here's the challenge. We just want to blend in. But if you will use his word instead of your words, you change your world. You have the power in Christ Jesus to change your foundations. God is coming in 2022 
to change your foundation. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. Something new in 22. So this morning, we're going to start in the book of Psalms 100. You know this. Very famous Psalms, verse 100, verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with complaining. Good morning. Welcome to Gateway. How are you? Oh, you have no idea what. No, no. Right? Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Circle that word thanksgiving. It does not mean being thankful. It doesn't mean gratitude. We think it does. That's not what it means. See, God wants you, first off, to enter his gates. You enter on purpose. All of you came today because you came today. You walk through the gates. That's what a gate's for, right? The gates are open. Well, I think I'll go through the gate. And you intentionally do it. But here in this scripture, it tells us how do we enter? How do we enter? We enter through thanksgiving. What's thanksgiving? Thanksgiving, this is the Hebrew word toda, T-O-W-D-A-H. And it's talking about a sacrifice. It's talking about a free will offering. Something that you offer, you don't have to, but you want to. You offer it by faith. Presenting your heart, presenting your spirit to the living God. Hallelujah. Lifting your hands to him in adoration. I'm giving you my heart. I'm placing my heart and my life right on your altar, mighty God. By the lifting of holy hands. Hallelujah. See, A total surrender of your heart. And of your life. That's what this word Toda means. This is thanksgiving. So it's talking about the sacrifice. Of your life. That you're giving to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on someone say amen. Help me out. So it's an action. Not an emotion. We still think thanksgiving means gratitude. No. It's an action. Thanksgiving will bring you right through the gates. Get out of my way. I have a sacrifice for the king. Get out of my way. I got to give him my heart today. Hallelujah. And guess what? The, The gates always open wide to a person who has a heart like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Into God's presence. Now, how many believe this? You got to believe it. God is coming in 2022, to change foundations. No family will fail. The only way to save your family is to first save yourself. I'm going to use the story of Gideon this morning. If you have your Bibles, open them to Judges chapter 6. And I'm going to look at a portion that maybe you've overlooked. But when the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon, what is he doing? Remember, he's hiding out in a wine press trying to make some grain. Because at that time, it was illegal. Kind of like our mask mandates today. He took his mask off to defy the government. But he did it in hiding. He did it in secret. He didn't want to be found out. Hallelujah. You know any friends like that? The angel of the Lord came to Gideon, appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Can you see the paradox of that picture? See, Gideon was a hero and he didn't even know it. How do I know that? Because God's word is true. He never lies. So the angel was talking to Gideon something about him that Gideon didn't even know. It was news to him. I have news for you today. You're more than a conqueror through him who loved you and gave himself 
for you. <laughs> Same kind of thing, isn't it? Hallelujah. His past was all that he knew. His identity was found in what his family and his name had given to him. That was Gideon's foundation. His past was controlling his life. Church, whatever has happened to your family in the past, it will continue to happen unless you change the foundation your house is sitting on. There was no victory for Gideon in his family. But your past does not determine your future. Amen. Your past does not determine your future. Turn to someone and say, my past is not determined my future. All right? But that's what, that's what Gideon was. He was stuck there. All he could see was his defeat. Look at Gideon's response to when the angel spoke to him. Verse 13 says, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened? Where are the miracles that our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. Circle that word miracle. How do miracles come to us? By the hearing of faith, right? Is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. So God performed his miracles in the Old Testament the same way he does in the New Testament. There was no one in the land that was believing God. That's why there were no miracles. Is this okay? All Gideon could see was the failure, and obviously when you fail, it's God's fault. Am I getting too close to home? What had happened there, the enemy had invaded the land, amen? And Gideon was hiding out, just trying to stay under the radar, like so many Christian believers today. But the angel of the Lord found Gideon <laughs> and he spoke a mir miraculous word to him. But Gideon didn't see himself as a hero. Amen. Look at what the, the Lord said to Gideon, verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours. And you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? What? And you notice what the Lord's doing here, just like he did to Abraham. God was speaking to Gideon things that are not as though they were. Right? You see that? God was speaking in the now about something Gideon would do in his future as if it had already taken place. You mighty man of valor. God saw something in Gideon's heart. Amen. Gideon didn't know it was there. But that day something began to, to work in his heart. He heard something he'd never heard before. Gideon, you are mighty. Go in the might that I have given to you, you mighty man of valor. You are a world changer. This church moves nations. Amen? That's how God speaks, amen? Amen? Now let's look at Gideon's response. Verse 15, he said, so he said, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Notice that. 
Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least in, in my father's house. Notice it's a battle of the I. See that? See it? God says, I, I have sent you. And then he said, but who am I? His identity, Gideon's identity was found in his family. We are the weakest. And I am the least of the weakest. That was Gideon's foundation. But the Lord responds. I love the Lord. He always responds to our failure. He always responds to our unbelief with love. Amen. Has that ever happened to you? Uh, maybe you're today and you're in an, in an un... You don't know what to do. Well, God knows what to do. And he's not going to put you down if you cower in fear. Look what the Lord said. He said, then the Lord turned to him and said to him, surely I will be with you. And because of that fact, I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. We know the story that God, Gideon had an army of 300 that did the deal. Amen. But initially God said, Gideon, you don't need anyone. You got me. And just one man can defeat them. I thought someone would be shouting and running around. But you understand. Jesus said to us, hey, guys, where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, there am I. Are you getting this? Spirit of God spoke to Gideon. I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. What a shocking, amazing word. Have you ever heard a word from God that, that rocked you to the core? And Gideon did what, the same thing you and I would do. Notice what he said. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it's really you who's, who's talking to me. He wanted to make sure it just wasn't too much pizza the night before, that he really heard from God. Have you ever wrestled with the word that God gave to you through reading the, the scripture or maybe by attending a service or one of your intercessor friends, someone called you and, and there's something that resonated in their words and you knew God was speaking to you? Has that ever happened to you? Lift your hands if you... But before you believe that word, you still have to test it, don't you? And that's biblical. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So uh, uh, Gideon's request was not inappropriate. He said, listen, I just need to know. But do you know this church? God will confirm his word for you. God will confirm his word for your life. Gideon had an offering. Something back home that he wanted to bring as a thanksgiving. To the Lord. Amen. Because he knew that we enter his gates through thanksgiving. So, so verse 18, he said, listen, 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 angel, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't depart from here I pray, until I come back. And I'm going to bring my offering and set it before you. And the angel said, I will wait until you come back. You got to know the spirit of God will wait for you. God is waiting for you. He's not impatient. <laughs> Wherever you left your prayer closet, the Holy Ghost is right there just waiting for you to come back. Is this helping anyone today? Look at the next verse. So Gideon went in and prepared a young goat. All you Africans know that, does, that you don't do that in five minutes, do you? This is not Chick-fil-A. I mean, how do you prepare a goat? I don't know, but it takes some time. And unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket. He put the broth in a pot 
and he brought them out to him under the terebinth tree and presented them. So this must have taken hours. But the angel was still there. Oh, he's still there. Oh, that's great. Maybe this really is God. And so he comes. Amen. Look what he said. And then verse 20, the angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock. He pointed to a specific rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread and consumed the meat. And fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Wow. Well, someone say, wow. Do you think his question was answered? He just wanted to know, is this really God? Now notice verse 22 says, Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. (laughs) So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Sometimes you have encounters and you don't know till after they're done who it was. Has that ever happened to you? And Gideon was shocked. Verse 23. Then it says, then the Lord said to him, the angel had left. So it wasn't the angel speaking anymore. It was the Lord himself speaking to him. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I've heard that before, haven't you? Gideon, peace be with you. (laughs) Do not fear. You shall not die. Peace. Do not fear. Why was he fearful? Because the Midianites were there. You won't die. Now, he just figured out that God was speaking to him, and the source was the Spirit of God. So now, all of a sudden, in his mind, wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm mighty. God told me I'm mighty. And now he's telling me I'm not going to die. Can you see how the Spirit of God was building this man up, and his faith was growing? You talk about you wanting to grow? This is how you grow. Get this in your spirit today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So what did Gideon do? He didn't just hear the word. He built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace. The Lord is peace is Jehovah Shalom. That's the first time they have, they call the name of God Jehovah Shalom. God was revealing his character to Gideon. Amen. And to this day, the scripture says, it's still there. The altar is still there in Ophrah of the, Ab- Az- of the Abazrites. Say, it's still there. Well, let's look at what happened. God gave an offering to the Lord first. And then after that offering was given, his eyes were opened. And faith came into his heart. And then God spoke directly to him hallelujah how many want to have the voice of the lord speak to you present your offering of thanksgiving oh this is really good turn to your neighbor and say i'm glad i came today <laughs> revelation came The wonders of God you can never figure out with your own head. Have you figured that out? You could read the Bible all day long by yourself and nothing will happen. But when the Spirit of God illuminates something and He speaks to you, your life will never be the same. Can someone lift your hands? Thank God today. The Lord is peace. You need to know that. Jehovah Shalom. So whenever God interrupts your life, (laughs) see, none of this was planned by Gideon, was it? And at that place of visitation, 
wherever it happens, whenever it happens, when God shows up in your life, you know what you should do? Build an altar. Hallelujah. And after Gideon built that altar, see, his heart was prepared. The word that God had spoken to him, all of a sudden it started to come alive in him. His heart was prepared and he knew he was mighty. He hadn't gone to the school of the prophets. He hadn't gone to Bible school. He didn't know how to do anything, but he knew he was mighty. He, he grasped that word from God. Have you grasped the word that God has already spoken to you? Or are you still fighting him over it? Trying to explain why he's wrong. But once faith came to him, was God finished? No. Then God gave him even more direction. Look at the next verse. Next verse. Look at this. Verse 25. Now it came to pass the same night. Say the, the same night. Same night. Well, this is the same day. The same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull. Then he was very specific. The second bull of seven years old. And tear down the altar of Baal that your father has. And cut down the wooden image that's beside it. Every altar that the devil has always has an image next to it. You know that. Here was Gideon's problem. Satan's altar was in his house. His father had built it there. Not just for the family, but for the entire community to use. His dad was the community leader, head of the Kiwanis head of the Masonic temple, the, the main mucky muck, the chief surgeon of the hospital. He was the guy. The leader of the health department. Amen. But a shift was taking place in Gideon must remind you, whatever has happened to your family in the past will continue to happen unless you change the foundation your house is setting on. The only way to save your family is to save yourself first. But you have the power in Jesus Christ to change your foundation. Can someone lift your hands? Thank God today. Hallelujah. God is coming in 2022 to change foundations. Are you ready? So God speaks to Gideon after his heart is ready to receive. Gideon, tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image that's beside it and build an altar to the Lord God on top of this rock. And take that, that second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice and use the wood of the image that you just cut down to offer it to me. Can you see the picture? Can you see this? It's an exchange of altars. We need an exchange of altars in Tacoma. We need an exchange of altars in Puyallup. Gideon, now get, get this, Gideon couldn't just build a new altar. That wouldn't do anything. A lot of us were building new altars all the time, giving our hearts to God. But no, look what God told him. First, he had to pull down the old altar. Satan's altar was already in his house. 
His dad built it there. Hallelujah. Pull down the altar of Baal. Do you understand the altar of Baal is what caused Israel to fail? The altar of Baal is what caused God to divorce himself from Israel. What is the altar of Baal? Well, it's child sacrifice, sex trafficking, pornography, leisure, self-indulgence, self-gratification. That's the altar of Baal. And I'm not going to talk about the image that was next to the altar. Pulling down the old requires a sacrifice. Ooh. Gideon had to pull down the altar and the image that was next to it. Well, the image isn't so bad. Can't we just leave that up? No, you got to pull it down. But just pulling down the old, that wasn't enough either. There's more you must do. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's more. You got to take the old and you got to cut it up and use it to burn the sacrifice on the new altar. Everything that the devil has tried to build in your life, you're going to use it for fuel. That's kind of a hard word, isn't it? What did Gideon do? Well, he, he, he was learning that he's a mighty man of valor, wasn't he? Look, look at verse 27. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. He was afraid, but he obeyed the word anyway and figured out a way to do it. I really don't want to do this. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, but I'm going to do it anyway. You can do that. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Let's see. Let's go on. Verse 28. When the men of the city arose early in the morning, there was the altar of Baal torn down and the wooden image that was beside it was cut down and there was a second bowl and it was being offered on this altar which had been built verse 29 so they said to one another who has done this thing and when they had inquired and asked they said Gideon the son of Joash has done this thing Hallelujah. Then the city council of Tacoma said to Joash, bring out your son that he may die. Because he's torn down the altar of Baal. And because he has also cut down the wooden image that was beside it. Aren't you glad you came today? When, when Church, when you do the will of God, when you act upon the word, when you replace the old foundation in your life with a new foundation, people in your community will want to kill you. Aren't you glad you came today? Does that explain a few things for you? But all of this was still a test. God was testing Gideon's heart. He wasn't a man of valor for taking down the altar to Baal. That was just a test. That was preparation for the real battle that Gideon and all of Israel was about to face. But Gideon passed his test. There were a few more tests he had to pass. But this was the most critical. 
He had to remove the influence of Satan from his own house. Look at what it says in, in verse 33. This happened right after. Then all, all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east gathered together and they crossed over and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet and the Asbarites gathered behind him. You get the picture. All of a sudden, the tearing down of this of this uh, altar was minor in, in comparison to what was just taking place. The entire country had been invaded by hundreds of thousands of soldiers. See, the altar of God's sacrifice is never convenient, is it? <laughs> And Gideon had to confront some things in his own family that he either didn't see or had ignored. Church, the days of of ignorance are over for you. But the sacrifice of God's altar will produce results for you. To change your foundation, you know what God will do? God will give you a trumpet. God will give you a voice. All of a sudden, the courage will come, and you'll begin to speak, and you won't be saying status quo language, will you? Oh. And if you will do that, as you will do that, the people who were against you, they'll gather around you. (laughs) Because sacrifice is not... Grievous. Sacrifice is celebration. Are you getting this? We get to worship the king. (laughs) The king of kings and the lord of lords. And we enter into his victory. Church, don't give the devil your tears. That's what he wants. He wants you brokenhearted. He wants you defeated. He wants you full of fear. No, 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 don't do that. Don't give the devil his kinds of sacrifice. Instead, celebrate. Celebrate. Ha, lift your voice and lift your hands and shout unto God with a, a voice of triumph. Be glad in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blow your trumpet and people will come. Blow your trumpet and people will follow you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. (laughs) All of those that were ready to kill Gideon, now they rallied behind him. Don't get distracted by these skirmishes that we're having to face locally. Hallelujah. Just tear down the altar of Baal. And notice that Gideon didn't ask his dad permission. With one word from God, doing it God's way, they defeated the army of the Midianites and the Amalekites. And everything changed when Gideon believed God. Everything will change for you when you believe God. (laughs) Gideon's faith brought victory, not just for himself, But to all of Israel, hallelujah, everything changed when Gideon offered thanksgiving on the altar, a new altar, using the wood of the old demonic system to offer sacrifice to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You see, an altar is necessary in your life, but an altar only works when you place A sacrifice on it. Hallelujah. Exchange altars. Be bold and do it today. Abraham didn't waver. Remember the story? It's in Romans 4. Abraham didn't waver. Gideon didn't waver. They were strengthened in their faith, giving glory to God. 
whatever it may be in your life. Church, pull it down. From Satan's altar to God's altar. Hallelujah. Foundations are changing hands today. Oh, no family will fail in Jesus' name. Every calling in your life will succeed in Jesus' name. God is taking you higher. You will arise. Hallelujah. The past does not control you any longer. Just say, I will arise. You will arise. You can build a new foundation in your life. Hallelujah. Now, the same Lord that spoke to Gideon is speaking to us today, is he not? The same Lord spoke to his disciples. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. This is the same voice. Jesus said, catch this, if you have faith, As a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. You see, when you offer sacrifice, you say something. That means you. (laughs) That means you. That means you. Your faith will speak. If you have faith, you can say. Can you see that? If you have faith, you can say. If you have faith, if you have faith, you'll say stuff that other people won't say. If you have faith, you can say. That means you today. That means each of you today. If you have faith, you can say. Well, what do you say? You see what you say? You say, be pulled up. Speak it out of your mouth. Well, how are you supposed to pull it? Notice he says, how do you pull it up? Pull it up. Be pulled up by the roots. Let's practice. Can you say that with me? Say, be pulled up by the roots. Now, we think that somehow, just like a Disney cartoon, that you speak to the plant, and then the plant just does it. No, plants don't do that. You have to pull it up. Have you ever been weeding in your garden and you had a a weed that just wouldn't cooperate and you were nice up to them but you just said all of a cut okay all right this means war you're coming out in Jesus name and you went back and got the heavy artillery have you ever done that that tool that you never use because it's too much work to get it out you got it out and you prepared because you're going to get that thing out be pulled up from the roots Can you see that? Can you see that? This is not hoping that things will change. This is not hoping your family will figure it out. No, no, no. Just like Gideon, Jesus expects you to make it happen. If you have faith, you can say. Am I shocking you too much this morning? Is this all right? See, See, our attitudes... Your attitudes are deeply rooted in you. They've been at work in you for a long time. And some of them you got from your dad. Because you worshipped around his altar. Oh, come on. And your attitudes, they affect you how you hear. Don't they? They affect How you receive. Well, I don't believe that. Stupid. Stupid receive. I know that church was a cult. Honey, let's go right now. The only way attitudes will change is for you to uproot them. Remember, Jesus is the same Lord. He spoke in Luke 6. He said, you know, every tree is known by its own fruit. If you want to know what the tree is like, just look at the kind of fruit that's on the tree. Amen. Men don't gather figs from thorns. And you don't gather grapes from blackberry bushes. So why are you believing God for grapes to come off your blackberry bush? I must remind you again, whatever has happened to your family in the past 
will continue to happen unless you change the foundation your house is setting on. Do it now. Do it now. Do it today. Hallelujah. Don't put it off. And even as Gideon didn't ask permission, there's certain things are too, the days are too short. Don't ask permission. Just do it. Tear down the altar of Baal. Do whatever it takes to rip out the roots. Say, I rip out the roots. And don't stop until the ground you're standing on is totally free from every root. There is no accidental deliverance. (laughs) You think your your demon-possessed friend is just going to get delivered because you stay at home and hide out and pray? No. There's some roots that got to come out in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, this kind only comes out through prayer and fasting. I'm looking for some man who has might. Gideon, you mighty man of valor. Pastor, what's the name of your new church? True Vine, you mighty man of Puyallup. Speak of those things that are not as though they were. Gateway Church, you mighty church of valor. (laughs) Tear down the altar of Baal. If you are to be free, church, how many want to be? If you want to be free, it will only take place, number one, as you choose to be everything God has told you you are. And then secondly, that you'll do something about it. You have the power in Christ Jesus to change your foundation. Say, be pulled up. By the roots. But then notice it says, and be planted in the sea. You see that? Can you see that? Planted in the sea. Next slide, please. There we go. Like I said, the plant doesn't replant itself. We're talking about uh, uh, when, you trans- when you transplant. This is transplant. You're transplanting the, the, the root. You put, wherever you put the root, it's going to take root and grow, right? But there's only one place. If you put it in the sea, it will die. It will die. It's dead forever. Jesus wants you permanently set free. Can you see it? Can you see it? He didn't say transplant it and put it in your greenhouse. Don't save a little portion. You might want it later. No. He said pull it up and cast it into the sea. See, dead issues, say dead issues, never to come again. Church, are you getting this? Once they are dead and gone, don't ever allow them to take root in you ever again. I don't care what you used to be. I don't care. I don't care. No, don't dwell on your old life. Say, be pulled up by the roots. Be planted in the sea. And notice it says it should obey you. It will listen to your voice. Church, your flesh will obey your commands. Well, I don't believe that. Fine. I'm I'm only speaking the truth in love. Your flesh will obey your commands. And if you don't take the authority, they will continue to dominate and hound your life. Don't lift your hands. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you stand up like Gideon did, if you stand up to your emotions and plant them in the sea, they can't stop you and they will obey. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You sacrifice. Your sacrifice, your obedience. You don't, see, you don't have to do this. You're saved by grace, not by this. But if you want to walk in freedom, 
Your obedience is a sign that you believe God's word. Today, we are ripping out old plants that have grown in old foundations. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say this with me today if you have faith moving in your heart. Whatever my father carried. Try it again. Whatever my father carried. I refuse to carry. I have a new altar. I have a new foundation. Fear, you do not rule in my heart any longer. Bitterness, resentment, uncleanness, laziness. I pull you up by the roots. God's altar is my praise. Ah, Holy, 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 God's altar is my praise. Hallelujah. Take down the old and put it on the altar of praise. Holy, holy. Thank you, Cindy, for standing up. I've got half of one person to figure this out. Ha, uh, Pastor, can, can you meet with me and counsel me over this problem? I don't have any victory. Put it on the altar of praise and you watch how quickly the victory will come into your life. Come on, come on, stand to your feet, give God praise today. Come on, we're not quite done. We're not quite done. This is important. This is important. I want you to catch this. God is waiting on you. God is, God, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Will you wait right here? And I'm going to come back. I'm going to go get an offer. I'll be back. God will wait for you. In, in, uh, in Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Church, it's time for you to blow your trumpet. It's time for you to speak God's words. Can you see it? Can you see it? Genuine celebration. When you offer praise to God, it stirs up the angels. We've talked about this. The angels are coming for your words. You're the trumpet. Employ them to help you in your battles. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Say, angels of the Lord, I release you for my assignment. Oh, don't worry about Olympia. They're afraid to come here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't worry about D.C. They're afraid to come here. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. And He's anointed you to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free. Amen, hallelujah. God will use your celebration to set the captive free. Let them hear your high praises in the midst of every problem. Hallelujah. My God. God is giving you strategies to shock your enemy. Your enemy is expecting you to do a certain thing because he's already figured you out. Why not shock them by doing what God says to do? I, I, I don't understand. I'm the weakest of my family and we're the smallest. Shock the enemy and become bold. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shock them by celebrating God today. Hallelujah. How do miracles come? By believing God. Hallelujah. Through the hearing of faith. Just believing God is not enough. Hallelujah. Once you hear by faith, then you have to do something with the word that he gives to you. Come on, lift your hands, close your eyes, just begin to pray. Twenty-two is the year to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have power. Say, I have power. You have power in Christ Jesus to change your foundation, to change the identity of your family. Hallelujah. If you will use his word instead of your words, you change your world. You change your world. You change your world. Hallelujah. 
foundations are changing this morning. No, your family will not fail. Your family will not fail. Hallelujah. Your family will not fail. Your calling will succeed. Your calling will succeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. When confusion comes, that's never the Holy Ghost. He's not the author of sin. He wants to set you free. Christ has redeemed us, has he not? He's given you power over all of the enemy. And he has a great victory for you today. Lift your hands. Receive the victory that only Christ, he's already done it. It's the perfect redemption. Impossibilities come in our life when we look through the veil of unbelief. Don't measure God by the impossibility. All it takes is to be with God. Always guard your heart. Don't give the devil any place, any room to operate. God is coming in 2022 to change foundations. I feel the Holy Ghost. If Jesus made it real simple. He said, if you simply believe, then you'll see. Remove the unbelief from your heart. And God will open your eyes to see things you've never seen before. He will open your ears to hear the word of the Lord you've never heard before. And then God has you in a place where he can finally speak to you your assignment. Hallelujah. God wants men full of the Holy Ghost, not just good churchgoers. He wants you full of the Holy Ghost, filled with divine ability, filled with life, a flame of fire. That's what he wants in you today. You know, our our mission statement, our, our vision for Gateway is to ordinary people becoming extravagant followers of Jesus. You may be ordinary, but with God, you become extraordinary. Come on. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we're going to pray for the, we're going to pray as a church against the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. Maybe you need some help in changing your foundation. You know what? We're going to change some foundations right now. And it all begins by first you believing in the might that God has already placed in you. You have to know who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. You have to know it. Just say, I am mighty through God to the pulling down. Of strongholds. Hallelujah. So you got to know that. And once you know that, then you got to pull them down and make a new altar. Hallelujah. Today we're going to make some new altars. New altars in the name of Jesus. I want you to come up your church. Let's prepare our hearts. We're going to pray. The Spirit of God's going to move. Pastor Bob, I need you up here to pray. Pastor David on that side. We're going to pray for new foundations. Hey, is this okay, church? Come on, get up, get up. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Spirit of God is moving. Spirit of God is moving. God brought you here today, pastor. This word was for you. Get up here, please, sir. Get up here, please. Lift your hands to the Lord. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Life, light, 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 light. God will turn your mourning into joy. God will use this, and the devil will regret the day he touched this on the Fire of God. Fire of God. He's all over. Fire of God. Fire of God. Radombo Boshukuro. Hallelujah. Brando Kosovo. Rama Kototoro. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A new voice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your hands, my God, is an awesome God. Hoko Shoto. Warriors of the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. God didn't heal you just for you to feel comfortable. God will give you instruction. 